What is up, everybody? Welcome to Thursday night. Thursday night means one thing. It is Doc Talk time here at Jackson Kayak Special Edition. It's the USA Bass and Directors Edition. Get a little trail update for you guys at home. Find out what's been going on. Find out what all these anglers have been up to. So hang with us. We're going to intro this thing here. Play you guys a little little NAR video, and then we'll be uh, we'll be right back to it. What is up? Full house tonight. Full house tonight. You guys don't have to sit around and look at just me. We've got all kinds of good people in this in this building tonight. Um, faces from around the trail. We've got uh, Jason Cassidy, our national tournament director, and our Tennessee tournament director. Him and his wife Nicole uh, running things down there on the Hiawassee River. Um, Vicky White. Coming to us from the great state of Texas. She's putting on, she's got probably one of the most premier schedules in all of the USA Bass and Trail going right now. Absolutely love what she's doing down there. Then from the great upper echelon of Maryland where fish get bigger than 60 inches. One, Mr. Rudy Yarworth in the house. Then... From the great state, the Hoosier state, Indiana. Like, who's here? Mr. Josh Gilbert uh, running a great trail uh, all around southern Indiana. I think we've had, you know, Monroe, Patoka, just finished the one up at Bass Lake. So, great series there. Great to see good people um, fishing the local stuff as well. So, welcome, everybody. Let's get this thing started. Um First off, just how's everything been going for you guys? How's uh, how's the year kicking off? Are you guys excited, seeing good turnouts, hearing good things? Yeah, it's been awesome. It's been, the first one was a little slow, but uh, June, we had quite a few people come out to Lake Fork and fish with us. That's awesome. Um, so, Texas, um, obviously your first tournament was at Toledo Bend. So you had a good first event there, and then you moved on, just finished up Fork. Um, what everything looked like at Fork? You want to run through that and kind of talk about, um, you know, when, who won, what it take to win, and, um, yeah, maybe who's got the points lead out there? Yeah, I um, actually I don't have the notes with me. I know Hunter has 90 inches. I have to – I'd have to pull it up. I don't remember his name. Actually, Chance Van Winkle, I do remember. Uh, yeah, he, he took it with 94 inches out there. It was a crazy, it was over 100 degrees already. So it was a hot one, but it was it was awesome. We had 10 come out um, and battle it out. It was really close in the morning. Um, quite a few with 86 inches, 84. And then that one big kicker really got him up. 94 and he took it um we have lake athens coming up in july august is ohiv and then september is going to be sam raven so it's going to be pretty awesome i think the rest of the year and that is a wild schedule i jason has said all along since you popped your schedule up like you have the uh you have the uh the, the events to be jealous of i mean Come on. That is a star-studded schedule. How do you feel like Texas, as you guys wear on in the heat? I know, like, up here in the Midwest, it gets a little tougher as things wear on. But how does Texas play? As you guys obviously get way hotter than we get. Um, those fish usually 
all pretty well haunt deep do you expect it to be like deep water fishing or you think uh, somebody can win this thing maybe up shallow as you move into the next one you think it's going to be that early morning bite uh you know that very first thing bites, uh that's definitely going to be the big one and then you know yeah as the day goes on you're going to have to fish a little deeper but yeah i think it's going to be that, that early morning that's going to do it. Chad, you're on mute. Chad, you're muted, Chad. <laughs> muted. I muted myself. Look at me go. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you've got the next one coming up um, on the 13th of it looks like July. And then after that, you've got two to round everything out in August. Do you think that the, uh, as this thing grows, do you think those points are going to get tight right there towards the end? And just as everything keeps blossoming down there in the fine state of Texas. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, it started slow with that first one down at Toledo, but I think now that people have, have been out and seen it, I think it is, it is going to get really tight. And then, yeah, we might do something for the fall too, but uh, yeah, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be really busy the rest of the summer. You might talk some of us into uh, coming down in the fall. You guys call it fall; we call it the dead of winter around here. <laughs> um, <laughs> January is considered fall in Texas, right? Pretty much, yeah. January is the only month I don't fish. Sometimes. <laughs> I think I'd have to fish if I was in Texas. Well, Vicki, we know that you've got a lot going on tonight. You're actually at a different event, getting ready for that coming up tomorrow. Um, so we're going to let you jet out. We know you got big things coming, but thank you so very much for checking in with us from Texas. We wish you the best for the rest of the season and, you know, catch some big ones. Hope to see you in the winter circle, and we hope we can hang out with you at Kentucky Lake. All right. See you guys. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks, Vicki. All right. So that was Vicki from our tournament trail in Texas. Stoked to have her on board. She is one of our newest directors um, coming to, sorry, we got motorcycles outside. Apparently we've got a Harley Brigade out there. Um, so Vicki is one of our newest directors in the great state of Texas. Um, she's taken things over this year and again, put together a heck of a schedule um and getting her feet wet in this uh tournament running scene so proud of her and what she's accomplishing down there it's going to be great wouldn't you say jason oh i i couldn't agree more um and to echo what you said earlier her schedule is definitely like the bees knees um i mean pretty much it, all all five of those lakes are bucket list lakes for uh, most everybody um around the country so to have a tournament schedule, a division for USA Bass, and set around those uh, incredible bodies of water um, is awesome. And if I have the opportunity, or anybody out there listening has the opportunity to, uh, you know, hey, you want to go try out a lake and, you know, get some AOI points, you know, at the end of the year, those things are going to come in handy. And uh, we got Rudy down here. He's trying to take everybody out for end of the year on the national scene. So uh, you can go, go uh, slide down to Texas and, and catch some of them big old hogs they got down there. Um, it'd be a great opportunity to do that. Speaking, speaking of going full bore, we do have Mr. Rudy Yarworth in the house tonight. You talk about somebody that um, has really went big this year as far as the events that they're running up in the great north um man rudy i mean you let me have the points last year but you come back and you said we ain't doing that again i'm coming at you with two divisions i'm gonna take this national points title i'm gonna wear the crown how are things going out there in maryland for you guys this year um well it's a tight race man i got uh pat russ 38 points behind me and he said he's gunning for me in my in my division so I can't miss a tournament, and I can't have a a zero on the board. I got to keep those points, so I got to catch at least one fish. 
been helping out um, Chris over at Big Bass USA with his trail up in the chop tank. Mm -hmm. And I'm running two myself um, on Potomac with my son Josh and uh, on the um, Conowingo with uh, Matt Campbell and Josh. Yeah, and you guys have got, man, I mean, when you flip over to the national points, man, I, I see a lot of I see a lot of Kentucky and a lot of Maryland. We're gonna have a big turnout this year. Bringing the yeah, I mean, we're bringing that bringing that BSB home with us, man. That blues guy is coming home with us. Yeah, Just and it so it, as far as as far as what you're seeing in each division, let's start with the uh, Susquehanna division first. Um, and kind of bounce through it. Talk about some of the things that have gone on in the Susquehanna division, some of your winners, uh, maybe some of the close finishes that you guys have had in the Susquehanna. So, I mean, as you know about the kayak fishing community, you know, there's a bunch of different trails that fish out here and everyone kind of like works together. So we started off when we kicked it off, we, you know, we jumped on the water with uh, MAKBF and um, uh, Chesapeake Grill Masters. And we, you know, we went it. We went at it at style. So we got like twenty one anglers battling right now for points with Matt Campbell, my teammate, up there at first with uh two hundred ninety six points. Um, my buddy Pat, who's going for the national points, trying to knock me out. He's sitting at second. You got me at third. That's the Conowingo. Um, so it's a it's a tight race up there. My buddy Will, right there behind him, and Mark Nelson. So. It, just a few points, man. One, one, you know, one, one tournament win. If somebody doesn't catch fish, and uh, that's going to change up pretty quickly. So, but um, we'll be on the Conowingo in two weeks, so we'll see how 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 it shapes out. Talking about changing up quick. I mean, that is one thing. Uh, so these tournaments traditionally go all five events for your AOI race. I mean, one slip up in five tournaments can really set you back as far as your divisional AOI is concerned. Does that put pressure on you, Rudy? It does. And uh, I think it's great that, you know, we have division AOI and big fish this year. Um, Cause you look at that, you know, that chop tank river, it's like a 22 and a half inch. Uh, large mouth last week i mean we were having a hard time putting one or two fish up in that tidal water um that made to 12 inches so i guess when you're going to go big go big or go home right absolutely dude absolutely and you know i think the one of the interesting things as you have got two divisions where you're at so you're going to be bringing potentially two different anglers to the land big fish tournament of champions that happens during classic week, which I think is pretty cool. You, you get the winner gets to take home, um, in a side pot tournament, basically an extra thousand dollars. You know, you've got the, um, you've got the land big fish, $500 gift card, and then you turn around and you get $500 cash from USA Bass. And so, you know, really a good, good way to double up and, make a little extra cash from somebody, you know, from Maryland and to bring two guys is phenomenal. Yeah. If two guys meet trails, that's four. Plus you, if you chop tanks, Maryland also, that's still be six Maryland guys coming out there. Hopefully yeah. to take that money back with them. But hope you're ready for us. Oh, uh, we'll be ready to score your fish. I'll bring there, my, 60, Jason. my 60 inch catch for you, man. Bring your 60 inch catch or yak attack board. Both boards are illegal now. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the um, the Potomac division, as we call it. Um, yeah, let's kind of run through that. That's that's kind of a different animal as far as the the water that you guys are fishing. How is how's that side of the trail been? I, I mean, there again, it looks like you guys have got another pretty tight race going on. A little father son tight race. Yeah, my son's ahead of me right now but we'll have to work on that josh does a lot a lot of studying you know he, he thinks he's got to figure it out but dad's always right there behind him so um it's a river fishing event man it's uh it's like the little like the little susky right it's just uh river fishing at its finest people forget about the potomac river you get guys putting up 20 inch smallmouth. um it's uh <laughs> did i get a haircut 
Got a little distracted with that post, but yeah. Um, no, I could probably use a little shave. Um, but yeah, so um, it's a river fishing event. And like at the beginning of the year, you know, I think we had a lot of rain come through. So all our trails, we had some safety issues. We had to postpone them a little bit. But, you know, we picked back up on the Potomac. You know, we're pushing 16 people last event, last two events. So that's great. It's great to see the turnout. A few more people find out, you know, I'd like to see 20 or 30. Um, I love when we're paying out three spaces and uh, guys are out there. And, you know, people have a bad day and I just tell them, I said, I don't care what trail you're fishing. You know, you want to make a check, it just takes one fish, man. Just one big fish, and that's all it takes. And there's guys out there that it seems like that's all they can catch is that big fish and they get squeezed out by like a half inch. Last, last week we had ties for first place. Um, the week before that, we had ties for big bass with 19 and three quarters. Um, it's a interesting trail, so definitely gonna awesome. get at it. And we, you know, we're going a little bit further west this this time. Um, not getting, I thought we'd get a few more people from like West Virginia and Western Maryland by opening up a little more of the river to the west, but uh, it doesn't seem like it's drawing. So we'll see what happens. That's where we're going to be this next round. Um, we're going to be out west, so we'll do the Conowingo, and we'll go, out, we'll go out west for the Potomac. So we'll see what happens. But still, I think you're seeing, as far as turnout goes, um, you're seeing a good, pretty good solid increase from what you guys had last year as far as people finding the trail and, and coming out to fish with you. Yeah, we got a lot of people coming out, you know, and the biggest part about it was, is uh, you know, we got um, – Local dealers like Delaware Paddle Sports, you know, supporting us. A lot of the anglers, you know, you like, like to get out there and fish these events. And um, they kick in like a little gift card. So it helps sweeten the pot a little bit, get a little more people out there. And uh, hope you just grow that community a little bit more. Josh Evans is wanting to know when the next Conowingo event is. I guess that's how you say it. I'm terrible at that. Yeah, the 29th. 29th? There you have it, Josh. Yep. See, see, Mr. Evans out there in the standings as well. You know, it's good to see see got several teammates out there fishing in the uh, Maryland division. So that's cool to see. We were fishing in his backyard down there in the Potomac, and uh, he couldn't get out there. But you know, he did drive by and, and toss us a wave and a couple horn beefs as we were doing our awards. That was kind of cool. Yeah, he he did sneak up and get a win earlier in the season, though it looks like. Oh yeah. Josh is a beast, We don't want to talk about it. <laughs> no. He finds, he finds a big fish. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Congratulations to Josh on that win. And it's, it's awesome to see that trail grow. And I think, you know, one of the things as this trail continues to grow, it's been pretty, it's been pretty amazing. And I think all the directors in the group can agree the big turnouts really hasn't been something that we've necessarily been looking for. Um, but it's been really awesome to have some of these smaller 20, less than 20, um, groups to where you can actually have a little bit of time to shake hands and get to know the other anglers that are out on the trail. Uh, some of the things that we're doing with the meetups and, and different things, how has that, you know, impacted your guys' communities and, and anybody can answer that as far as impacting kayak fishing community around your area. I mean, with it, us here in Tennessee, um, you know, and I'm sure we're we're experiencing all across the country. Uh, we do an in-person uh, meetup at the end of the day uh, to hand out the awards. We do cash handout at the end of the tournament, and you know, putting names with faces and and meeting people in real life, it it, it just hits totally different. You know, coming from um, like the online side of tournaments, you. You, you're just a, a name and a, you know, Tony X profile picture. Um, but when you could uh, hang out with people, have real conversation, you know, that camaraderie piece that, you know, we all preach that we really want um, when you actually get it, man, it's, it's the juice. And that's, that's what we're trying to squeeze is, you know, that particular nugget right there. That's, that's what we want. That's what the community of kayak fishing uh, is really centralized around. And um, that community is super big with Jackson. It's super big with us directors and 
Um, we I, I love seeing it grow. Whether you've got two people or, or 25 people um, at a tournament, if, if you can have that camaraderie, uh, it's a success. You know what I mean? In, in, in my my viewpoint of it, and, uh, I love seeing it. Love seeing it happen. Now we do, since Kentucky's not here, I'm going to go ahead and talk about it. We do have an elephant in the room for this weekend. Um, a great big tournament uh, at a pretty, I'm going to go ahead and call it a historic venue because it actually very much is at Lake Cumberland. Um, I mean, how do you, how do you not like Cumberland? I mean, it's a, it's a huge place. It's, Got a lot of like elite series, pro tour history. How do you guys think that Cumberland tournament's going to stack up? Is that one that you guys are excited to watch and see the scores come in? Oh yeah, definitely. I, I'm, I hope to uh, hear about somebody getting on like a houseboat pattern out there. Or something <laughs> like that. I know it's, I know it's yeah. the houseboat capital of the world, and uh, it, it's a beautiful stretch of of water. Um, you know, both you know what? Cumberland I miss, and Dale Hollow. It's gorgeous. I misspoke. I mis- totally misspoke. I said the wrong thing. I'm thinking the Cumberland River, which I'm right. But I told you, I told everybody at home wrong. So if you're listening to me, I'm handicapped on my speaking tonight. It's the Cumberland River, but river, but it's historic Lake Barkley. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Barkley. We've already been to Cumberland for the Kentucky tour. So we're back to we're back to Barkley, which is like now still both lakes are historic in their own right. In that defense, the Cumberland River is as awesome as the Tennessee River. But uh, how do you think the Lake Barkley is going to stack up um, against some of the other places that uh, they've been? Do you think summertime leads fishing is going to be a big player? Yeah, I would I would say so. I'm I'm curious. I, I know there's a lot of chatter um, on Kentucky Lake on how phenomenal the smallmouth fishing's getting um, on on that side of the LBL, but um, the Cumberland's chock full of you know premium smallmouth. Uh, so I would I'd have to say that Barkley would be as good or a better of a smallmouth fishery. Um, and yeah, I, I think you'll definitely see some ledge, some ledge stuff play that deeper water. Um, it's all going to matter. I mean, really, if they're pulling some juice through the dams, um, you get, you know, 4,000, 5,000 um, running through. That's that's not going to be enough to, you know, make much of a difference. But if they crank them up to, you know, 20 or better, um, that offshore bike could get real good real fast. So somebody can figure that out. If the TVA pulls the right amount of current, it could be a slugfest over there for sure. And Rudy mentioned Delaware Paddle Sports, but we've actually got with the Kentucky Trail, Kayaks and More, another Jackson Kayak dealer, uh, really shines through and, and also puts on that trail, which is phenomenal to see the dealer involvement starting to rise up with these uh, trails and, and the action that they're taking to keep making things bigger and better um, on that front. Yeah, Tony does one heck of a job over there. Tony and uh, he's assisted by uh, Chris Hogan. Uh, those guys are doing a phenomenal job in Kentucky. They, they put on a good show. Um, like Rudy had mentioned earlier with, you know, some sponsorship support, you know, they, they juice the pot. Uh, by throwing some extra money out there. I, I think they've got like, is it a $300 guaranteed big bass for every tournament or something? It's no, something yeah. pretty so, crazy. Uh, Emerson, Emerson County um, or Edmondson County has stepped up to uh, to make that possible, I believe, for them um, for each and every one of their events this year. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, heck, you don't see yeah. that at a lot of national level events. So uh, to get that at a local event that, you know, you can – drive an hour or two or five minutes to um, is incredible. Great opportunity. So kudos to those guys. Yeah, it really, really makes a difference. And it gets guys excited. Um, who doesn't want to catch big fish? 
Uh, but uh, as we roll along here, Mister Mister Josh, Indiana man, how is how has I mean I've been there, but how's uh, how's things looked so far in Indiana? What have you uh, what have you been seeing out there with your guys and uh, and the competition? Has it been has it been tight? I mean, what you got going on? I don't know, but all I know is that you better watch out because Wyatt's got something to prove this year. Harding off with two of them in a row, that was that was that was pretty good. Especially on the two of the bigger lakes that we have on the trail, so he came out swinging for sure. So I'm looking forward to see what if he keep that lead. You know, we got two more, and I I don't know, man. You be anybody. I mean, you got you got some pretty good uh, hammers in that little division. So it'll it'll be interesting to see how it plays out for the rest of the year. So yeah, yeah we for got. Sure. We got dogwood coming up. I don't know. I think on that one there, it'd be a lot of fish caught. So he should be, I think. But uh, I think the person that can walk off with that, who's going to find a couple big ones thrown on the board. That's just my thought. But it should be interesting. Yeah. Dogwood, as far as an, an Indiana tournament, I, I believe, um, man, it'll be real competitive. Um, I think it'd be the best way to put that one uh, yeah. as far as Indiana goes. But I think besides why an honorable mention, you got to give it to Mr. Sam Jones, the bridesmaid yes. of bridesmaids. Yes. Finally pulled through this weekend. And, he did a good job. Uh, last weekend. Yeah, pulled one good out. Good job. Yeah, and I believe, man, he was only one of only two five fish limits that we had this past weekend. Um, yeah. Had a little bit of a weather change, a little bit of a wind direction change, and yeah, it really uh, toughened up the bite, wouldn't you say? Yes, for sure. I don't want to ever want to see it out of the east, but that's how it played out. So it changed, and apparently he took advantage of it. He knew what to do and made the right calls, and he kept up yep. there on top, and he pulled out the W. Yep. So kudos One to like him. It. Yeah, kudos to him on that. It was a, it was a good fun tournament. It was a place that we hadn't been to uh, for a really long time, so it was kind of fun to go back there. I think, and man, you put on a great event, and you know, we was. Uh, Man, you know, to add to it, really, you know, even our last one down at Tucker Lake, it, it'll be, it'll be kind of, I think you'll see a lot of fish caught there for the time that we're going. And I think mm -hmm. it, it could play out like dogwood. If that one person can find those couple big ones, throw them on the board, I think you got a shot. So, I yeah. mean, that, we got some lakes to do a turnaround. You know, there's no, not lost hope for sure, you know. So, yeah, and I'm looking forward to it. The competitiveness, I think, as we move forward into these last few tournaments, is going to really keep that leaderboard at the top tight yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as the AOI points. And you can't count out Jim Bailey, who is no. also no. just right there waiting in the dark for right, one yeah. of these two guys to mess up. And right. if one of these two guys messes up, Jim's going to slide in there. He and is. he'll slide in there quick, fast, and then hurry. He says, yeah, yeah, he, he don't sleep on Jim. <laughs> no. No, no we, I know. We, Out of the last two of them, I'm looking forward to Tucker. That's probably the one I got the most confident in, as far as fishing wise. Mm -hmm. So, hoping one of the next two of them might do some sort of turnaround. Yeah, I think uh, I think like you said, those will be really competitive events in Indiana, and it'll be fun to watch how how things play out and see see who keeps their footing out of these three guys and. Yeah, who comes through? Who come, does Jim Bailey come from behind and take them all out, or is it you know is Wyatt going to maintain his slim you know, lead? The only thing I'd say, especially with the, with Tucker Lake, out of you know the top anyway, is Wyatt. In my opinion, got the advantage. He he fished it last year, so he should you know, as far as the knowledge goes, should have it. But mm -hmm. hey, anything can happen. If we make it to the if, – if you fish the classic, Josh, and Rudy beats you, will you wear Rudy's helmet? Sure. I'll wear it. I'll wear it with pride all day long, buddy. <laughs> but if you Josh beats you – Hey, if Josh if, beats can you we do it day by – day. We need to do it day by day, though. That's the funny part. Hope yeah, you by Josh, daily. If Josh beats you on day one, Rudy – you Will have you wear to wear my hat? his tie dye hat. Let me show you. I got it right here. Hang on. Bring him my warhammer. Will you wear this, Rudy? Josh's lucky fishing hat. Sure. Pink tie dye. 
Yeah, okay. Here we go. <laughs> That'll be bad. good. That'll be good. I like and making bets that I'm not involved in. Um, <laughs> well, see, it always works I'm out better for advantage. me if I'm not I'm have an advantage when I get there. Because I've been paddling and peddling all these tournaments, but mm-hmm. I'm going power. So. Uh oh. Hey, I, I should like, have power by then. I'm hoping. Anyway, yeah. that's I'm swinging it. So. I'm hoping. Okay. It should be once we get down south, that'll be a fun event. It'll be fun to see everybody. Mr. Cassidy, the great <laughs> state of Tennessee, man. How's things been going? Um, how's things been going in the volunteer state for uh, the Hiawassee division? It's been going good. Uh, our last two tournaments have been on the Hiawassee. Uh, a lot of folks might not know what that is, but if you look at a map of Lake Chickamauga, uh, there's a very large uh, river that enters from the east, uh, flowing into the lake uh, on the west side there. And there's a group of islands just below Dayton. That is the Hiawassee uh, River. Um, so you were allowed to launch anywhere. Uh, within that river and fish Chickamauga, you just had to launch from, you know, the the mouth of the river, and you could go up or down as far as your little legs or motor wanted to take you, uh, and you had to land back um, at that area. But no, it it's been good. Um, we'd like to see more anglers turn out. I know this past weekend was scorcher just about everywhere in the country. It was really hot. Uh, we teamed up with uh, Setka, which is a local club here, the Southeast Tennessee Kayak Anglers. Uh, Jonathan Cowball and Stephen Rogers uh, put that club on. They they run a great, great group of guys um, at all their events. So we were able to tag team with them, make some more connections, um, and we're looking to grow it on the uh, our next event, which is July 27th, and that'll be on Parksville um, or Lake Ocoee, as some people call it. It is home of the state record spotted bass, uh, which some knucklehead transported some Alabama spots to that particular <laughs> body of water, and they just went buck wild and crazy. And uh, well, now it's full of spotted bass, very few largemouth, but some of the spots you catch are magnum spots, you know, those four, five, six, seven pound class spotted bass, which they're, they're absolute dynamite to catch. Uh, a lot of fun. So uh, our last two events will be on that body of water, which uh, hopefully I'll, you know, we're talking about Sam Jones, you know, I'm going to steal some of his uh, ginger power and transport it right in here so I can get that uh, top spot. I've got three tournaments uh, with USA Bass and all three have been second place. Um, I thought I had a good shot last week i put up over 90 inches and i'm like hey that's gonna be pretty good but uh joe kirk uh killed it <laughs> with 98 inches um on lake chickamauga or hiawassee i'm not sure where he was fishing but um he was fishing somewhere more better than where i was uh, yeah he killed it i mean he put a beating on everybody in 100 degree uh weather so i mean he was so confident he, after he took off the water, he went and picked up his wife at home and then came to the check-in uh, so she could be there to celebrate the, the W and take home the cash. So he had a good day for sure. But, yeah. No more no more second places for me. I had three tournaments this week, all three second places. So um, I jumped in a Tuesday nighter, second place. So I, I, got, I got another one this weekend, so hopefully I can uh, – Get the get the win. Break my bridesmaid curse. Break the bridesmaid curse. That's we're, a that's we're definitely friends. a thing in fishing. If it, no, it, if it makes terrible. you feel any if it makes you feel any better. I was second place last night on the river as well. So don't feel bad. It happens it happens to us all. Sometimes we're <laughs> always the first loser. I mean, um, Jake, Jake and Josh can battle for second place when we get to Kentucky Lake. No nah. first. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> As much as I would love to uh, rip those lips on, and man, last year was torture uh, to sit here and watch everybody fish. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be doing the same thing. I'll I'll be at uh, eight tournament HQ, 
getting Chad out of bed, screaming and yelling, playing thunderstruck. <laughs> uh, just like yep. I'm getting ready to go out there and, and fish that derby. Uh, I was I was pretty jacked up to judge from fish last year. So Chad's he either going to set his alarm a little earlier or put in some uh, earplugs. <laughs> One of the two. <laughs> Yeah, Chad had to get out there and take pictures. Jason got to stay at HQ and, and do everything, but Chad got out on the water uh, a couple days and, and took found some guys, took some photos, which was even tougher because it was like, here I am out in my kayak watching people fish and, you know, still just – you know, it was crazy. And and Rudy, you were one of our judges last year as well for yeah. this event. Last year, my goodness, you talk about competitive down to the wire. Um, for that Blake to show it, and people always want to say, Oh, big fish, big fish, big fish. But the how competitive that is made it a barn burner, wouldn't you guys say? A billion percent. I mean, it was one of the most exciting tournaments I've ever watched, you know, plastic or fiberglass, whatever. Um, and I mean, literally at, at, at the awards, um, I mean, we're putting the pin to the paper. We're triple checking, double checking because it, it was that close. Um, it was just an amazing event to watch. You know, I, I, I really felt for Marcus, um, you know, because you, you hate to see um, there's always a that second place guy, you know, somebody's got to win. Somebody's got to fall just short. And uh, he fell just short in that particular event. He, you just feel for him, but then to see a guy um, who literally didn't even own a kayak, you know what I mean? I, he he borrowed a kayak to fish the event, you know, and he went home with ten thousand dollars in cash and prizes. Um, you got to love that story too. So I, I can't wait to see what happens this year. I think we're definitely going to have a bigger turnout, um, which may tighten things up that much more. Kentucky Lake is full. Of uh, you know, sixteen to twenty inch fish now, and it it'll be it'll be tight. It'll be tight. I don't remember if it was one through ten or one through fifteen. And Rudy and Jason could probably answer this as well, but it was literally stacked to the point where if somebody would have caught one fish, the difference that would have made was a win. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think Chris Chris Phelan, um, he he had. He had the winning fish on his board, and it flipped off. Um, mm -hmm. And had he got a, a photo of that fish, I mean, it, it would have flipped. It would have flipped him all the way up to the top of the board. So, um, <laughs> it, any any little thing made all the difference in that event for sure. You watched waves of fish come in when we were checking them in. Like it'd be like. A, a lull and then like five or six seven eight fifteen fish would come in and then mm -hmm. you'd watch the ranks kind of shift around a little bit and there'd be a lull and then they come in again and you're like man this is getting interesting so but uh we kept you exciting guys busy from the judging side oh yeah and i i have a whole new respect for uh tournament directors uh, especially when it comes to uh the sandbaggers you know, that, <laughs> that last hour or whatever. The heck, that last 15 minutes of, you know, upload time. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Just when you think you got the winners figured out, it was, it was all, I'm like, oh my gosh. What are these guys doing? They're killing me. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's hectic. It, but it's a fun hectic. It's really exciting. It's a lot of fun. So the top 200 are going to get a go again this year is kind of what we're looking at. Um, to head to the USA Bass and Jackson Kayak Classic, um, as it's known. This year's grand prize is obviously the Blue Sky Boat Works, which we've been toting around here just quite a bit uh, this season with our Blue Sky Boat Works tournament schedule. And it's a, it's a lot to say. But uh, <laughs> our Blue Sky Boat Works tournament schedule. Um, getting that out there and it's it's going to be amazing because it's not just the blue sky it's five thousand dollars in cold hard cash and the blue sky going to the winner i mean it's something to be proud of plus you get that trophy that uh that recognition for the uh for the year i mean that's that's awesome 
for getting to fish at home and then getting to uh, to leave home and go fish one big event with everybody as a community together is, is just something that's incredible. Yeah, definitely. And uh, if, if you haven't had an opportunity to, you know, get on a blue sky, um, it, it is the bee's knees. And I, 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 I got to say, it's probably the best fishing platform I've been on. Uh, we all get those questions all the time. You know, people like, oh, especially from the boat world, I'd flip that. You know, people don't say that about this blue sky when they see it. Um, it, it, it it's like the sparkly dress. I mean, everybody's got to come over and look at it and witness what's going on with it. Um, and then you, I mean, we're just sitting there at the boat ramp and I'll just, just walk on it. No, oh, no, I'll, I'll, no, just walk on it. They just walk right <laughs> on that thing and they, they're like, well, I, I gotta get one of these. <laughs> like, yeah, you do. Go on and get you one. Um, yep. and it, it's, it's just a, a remarkable, remarkable boat. And, I can't wait to to get this giant box down to uh, Kentucky Lake and let somebody pop it open and take home a brand new boat. It's going to be super cool. That, it, speaking of that, you've already got the boat in your possession. It, it's already it's already ready to go. Yes, nice. She's, she's red, big red, awesome boat. Um, it looks just like mine except cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's getting pretty dirty pretty quick, but that's good. We're having a good time at it, man. It's, it's going well. I'm uh I'm gonna have to go out and heckle Rudy uh the day of the event, the first day. I think at Ru- day one I'm gonna follow you, Rudy, and just come and hang out boat side, take photos, and just heckle because I can't fish against you. So I'm just gonna heckle you and take photos. I do better under pressure, man. I say bring it. I'm not used to having a camera, man, but It'd be nice to have you out there. I get a better fish pick. I get these big, big mitts here. So they look small. <laughs> I might not be good at many things, but at least I can kind of halfway get a good photo every now and then. So I'm That's sure awesome, we can. Man. I'm sure we can arrange it. I do better. I'm all. I mean, all my events that I fish, tournaments, saltwater, freshwater. I'm usually with guys that are just getting started, and we have a crew I fish with, and everybody's like, "Why do you fish tournaments?" you know, with people with you. I'm like, well, that's what it's all about for me, man. It's just get down the water with others. So we kind of like every event we fish, you know, we pick a place to launch and three or four of us launch. It gets a little crowded, but, you know, you talk about camaraderie, you get out there and you hear the fish stories or you walk, look over and I see my buddy Will and he's like, it's a 22 inch smallmouth. And I'm like, did you get the picture? He goes, no, it jumped <laughs> off the board. <laughs> That was that was the first Conowingo event, you know, down there on the tidal side. He caught this huge smallmouth, and uh, you know, I turn around and I look at him. He's sitting there looking at this board, and he's like, "I is twenty two inch smallmouth." I'm like, "It just jumped off the board." I'm like, "Where at? Let me cast over there." And uh, he hooks up with another one, and the line breaks. I'm like, "Man, you can't get a break today." Mm-hmm. So it's just, uh, I mean, that's what it's all about, though. You know, I started turning off the leaderboard at like twelve thirty. That way everyone's like guessing like where they are because before it's like, you know, people just uh, give up. I'm like, but, you know, I should never give up, man, because it only takes, you know, I catch my fish at the last hour, the last few minutes. Sometimes that's how it is. I, I think one event we, we got out, the three of us, and we moved three times on the river because the fish, it was they weren't biting or they were like really short. And, uh, you know, we put fish on the board by the end of the day. We didn't make the, the leaderboard, but... We got really good at packing our stuff up and checking out and moving to the next location. Uh, we started cutting back on our gear so we could be more mobile when that happens because, you know, it's getting hot out there. So I'm fish, they're going to get locked y'all. It's going to shut down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, and that's, I think, the biggest thing that we're heading into as we move into now coming on this end of June and moving into July is the heat. And we're already seeing some of it take effect. Uh, I mean, some of the local tournaments are starting to certainly see a big slowdown. Um, these fish getting locked jaw. How do you think this heat wave is going to affect guys um, that are heading out this weekend to fish the different events? Well, I was fishing out my backyard today. I li- you know, I live on the water and uh, the fish were not biting like they should. And I tell you, by the end of the day, I was drinking water all day long, but that thick, humid air was wearing on me. Um, yeah. It was a, uh, catches up to you 
I mean, I'm not, yep. I'm not young anymore. So, but I'll try to keep up with the young guys. That's for sure. But it's, uh, this- I say, if you're gonna, if you're fishing this weekend, it's gonna be hot. You better be drinking water now and staying hydrated and uh, get prepped up for that and keep plenty of water. Maybe even um, those Gator lights, you know, the electrolyte re- uh, replacements. Keep one of them in the cooler with you just to make sure mm-hmm. you know, you're staying hydrated and uh, eat something. Just because it's hot, mm-hmm. you still got to kind of keep that, keep those calories going so you can keep pushing through the day. And uh, yeah, like and you said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have a motor. Three big events. Oh. And we got three yeah. events this weekend, guys. I mean, we're, we're talking, we've got obviously the kayaks and more division in Kentucky heading to Barkley. Um, the chop tank in Tahoe Rivers on the, yeah, can't see. I need my glasses. Yeah. Rivers um, in Maryland this weekend on Sunday. And then Clater and Lake in that, Virginia on Sunday. Now Chris Leslie does that trail and he has Big Bass USA, which is a really small dealer, Jackson dealer mm-hmm. too. That's a, not a lot of big turnout on that event, but we got, you know, five hardcore folks going out there. So I'll definitely have to be back there because, like I said, Pat's uh, on my heels. If I miss the tournament and don't catch a fish, he's going to pass me on the national leader points. So. For sure. I can't give him up. I can't give him up. I can't give him up. <laughs> no, it, it gets, man, it gets tight, especially that big leader. Dude. I mean, you know, just like we was talking about Indiana and really any division for all that, for all that matters. I mean, missing a, missing a way in as far as, you know, not catching all the fish that you need um, or not just skunking period, man, that can, can really drop you down a leaderboard pretty quick as these tournaments start to stack up towards tournament five. And we're really, everybody's pretty much at halfway through the season right now. Yeah, we've got Bill Short in the house from New York. Yes, New York has got a heck of a trail too. Um, their next one is coming up, I believe, on six thirty is what I've seen um, on the on the leaderboard here. Let me flip over and look. Yeah, so yeah, six thirty, the Saranac Chain of Lakes, up in beautiful New York. It's a beautiful, beautiful area. So if you're in the New York area, check those tournaments out. That will definitely be worth your time. They put on. Phil puts on a heck of an event up there, and we're very proud of what he's done up there in the great state of New York. So, yeah, I think that's check a those out. I might have to, I might have to leave the Conowingo and head straight to Saranac. To yeah, my I tell you what, I wouldn't mind meeting you there one of these days. That would be, uh, that'd be a good tournament. It'd be a great turnout, great event. <laughs> but yeah, so. In closing, uh, anything that you guys got, Jason, you want to talk a little bit about what you see on the trail this year and um, some of the different things going on? Yeah. Uh, again, just want to thank anybody and everybody that's, that's fished one of our events uh, anywhere across the country and uh, just you know give that invite out there once again to, to everybody that uh, if you haven't fished a USA Bassin event if you haven't been a member that first year membership it's on the house you get to try it before you buy it if you will so go to uh, usabassin.com or reach out to any of your tournament directors they'd be happy to uh, point you in the right direction help you dot i's and cross t's uh, so you can come fish with us Um, i believe all of our events are like 60 bucks so it's relatively um, low entry it's not super cheap not super high but you get a good payout uh, when you do well and you catch all those big fish. Um, I would love to see, you know, people with the interest, if, if you've got an area or lake that you want to fish and see on the USA Bassin schedule, reach out to us. Um, you know, definitely would love to add you to our awesome group of TDs and give ag- anglers out there an opportunity to fish uh, with us to, you know, come to the classic and take home a bunch of money and prizes and hang out with this awesome group of people uh, that, you know, we call friends and family here at Jackson Kayak. Um, you know, it's it's about as good a time as you can get. You know, everybody's nice, everybody's friendly, um, and we're all here for a good time. We're just trying to catch a good time. You know what I mean? Should write a country song about that. But, um, you know, 
get out there, fish these trails. We most most of these guys, like Chad mentioned, have two events left. We've got two events left um, here in Tennessee. That two events, you if you catch a fish in both of those, you're you're gonna probably have right at what you need to qualify uh, for that USA Bass and Jackson uh, Classic. So get in there and get get fishing. AOI points, you might be a little too late to get that angler of the year, but you can definitely qualify to join us on Kentucky Lake in October to fish for ten thousand dollars. I think anybody that's uh, fished probably three events is a deadlock um, right now for for the way things are going. Um, yeah, the leaderboard leaderboard's looking really good. So I think uh, I think the classic's going to be a good turnout. I'm looking forward to that. Um, October it will be the classic for those of you uh, interested in that. Looking to head Kentucky Lake for that event. It's going to be October 18th and 19th um down there and yeah we'll have the pre-tournament meeting the night before over at kentucky lake outdoors another one of our fantastic dealers um jason will lead the ceremony there and yeah great yeah, place hopefully to uh we great gotta to we gotta get a bigger bigger uh venue we might have to you know pitch a big tent outside or something um, so definitely want to see everybody out there show up. Um, and it's like Rudy was mentioning early. Um, the it's, we don't have a team aspect, right. But we do have, you know, guys that fish with each other all year, you know, get together, team up, share lodging, um, you know, help save on that travel expense. And then, you know, a little, little, little trash talk never hurts. Um, I personally think that the winner is probably going to come. No, I'm not going to tell you. I, I don't think it's going to be Rudy. I think Rudy's going to go down. I don't, I don't <laughs> think it's going to happen. I think Chad's going to get in his head. He's he's going to get camera shy and uh, maybe fly a drone a little too close. Start, start buzzing some fish. I don't know. But, um, no, if, we can, yeah. if I can still fly drones, then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd love to see you. <laughs> hey, if I can still fly drones, the drone will fly. But uh, that's all. That's all up. That's a whole nother podcast for a different day. Um, it's up in the air, if you will. <laughs> yeah, it's up in, it's up in the air. It's up in the air. We'll see how the how drone flight goes with the uh, the the Congress in the House and all their fun stuff. What they've got going on. Um, but yeah, so we've got just to kind of tell you guys, it took 152.25 yeah. inches uh, from Hank Newsom to win last year. Uh, second place, right behind him, 151 inches uh, was Marcus Grubbs, and it was man, it was like pushing pushing 80 a day to uh, to qualify. Or well, each day, I mean, it was pretty well. Pretty well deadlock even. 78 to 80 inches a day is is what it was taking. Anywhere from 70 to 80. That's that's pretty well where to put that. Um, but it was it was really tight all the way through between. And I think it'll show out again. Do you guys think we're kind of going to be looking at the same type of numbers? Or do you think, you know, might see a little bit of bump? Higher. Yeah, I think we'll see a bump. I think it's going to take 83 a day. 166 inches. We don't catch small fish in Maryland, so you know we're, we're going to keep it up in the ninety range. <laughs> Bring that sixty-inch board. Rudy's bringing the sixty-inch board to Kentucky Lake, folks. So be prepared. <laughs> but what will I be fishing in? Will it be the Cusax, the Nar, or the Blue Sky? I don't know yet. We'll have to see. That's a great question. It's a great question. I'm interested to see what you bring. I'm interested to follow you and see where you go and learn how to fish. <laughs> that- I bring the blue sky. That new one will fit nicely on top of it in the back of my truck. So it might be something I need to think about if I'm planning on bringing it home. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's definitely that's definitely something that uh, anybody coming to the event should think about. Is yeah, this blue sky is coming home with you that day. It's not uh, if you if you win on that Saturday of the tournament and you're you're standing there with the uh, first place trophy in your hand, you're standing there with the blue sky in your hand as well. So. Definitely going to need a way to get that beast home. Get the fish off your trophy every day. 
<laughs> yeah, heck yeah. That's a good way to look at it for sure. Yeah, for sure. Well, in closing, is there anything that you guys got? Um, I'll let Rudy go first. You talk about your division, talk about the last few dates that you guys that you have and um, how they can learn more about your trail. All right. So uh, 629 and 713 are the next two events on the Conowingo and 714 and 84 for the Potomac. And if you know anybody out there who you know, wants to get into trying out kayak fishing tournaments, um, it's the great, it's, it's the better way to get into it right in your backyard. You don't got time to pre-fish. You just come on out. You fish it already. And if you fish it five times in a year for every tournament, you pretty much figure out your spots. So it's a great way to get into it. Like you said, Chad, to be able to go to a national event, you know, that's every guy's dream. Go out there and fish for big money. So, you know, come on out, join us. There's still time left between, you know, the four four tournaments left in, in Maryland that I'm, I'm serving up. You can easily qualify to go to Kentucky Lake. And it's like to see more people come on out. And the best thing about the uh, meetups at the end of the day is like it gets crowded on the river this time of year. And you'd be amazed at how many people stop. Hey, what's going on? You know, talk it up. You know, let them know what's going on. Tell them they can get out there. And now they can use not just the catch, but the Yak Attack leaderboard. So it's their choice. So I'm glad to see everyone out there. And, you know, for everyone out there, you know, remember these local dealers like Delaware Power Sports and tackle places like, like that we have supporting us like tactical fishing company these guys have been with us from day one when we started this and they're staying with us they're helping us grow this and i'm just very thankful for having sponsors help us keep this trail going and uh sweeten the pot because you know sometimes you only show up with five people and uh it's good to have a little more to give away and um you know for all that work we put in on the water and um you know let's, i'll see you on the water man let's go that oh, man, that's amazing. How about you, Josh? Let's talk about what you got left coming up. Next we got event. we got dogwood coming up on the twentieth uh, of July, and then we got to round it out down at Tucker Lake on August seventeenth. And looking forward to both of them, and really uh, looking forward to going down to the classic this year. At least putting one fish up on the board and prove from last year. Okay. There you go. <laughs> and now, I can't uh, wait. Where where can people learn more about the uh, the Hoosier Division, the Indiana Trail? I have a um, I started a Facebook page for the USA Bass for the Hoosier Division on through the Facebook, mm-hmm. or you believe you can find it all all the dates for most all the divisions on the USA Bass and regular one, correct? Regular USA Bass and um, yeah, USA or you Bassin go to the website, website. yeah. Yeah, and so, if you guys are looking for the group page, I probably should drop that in the comments below. Hmm. I will right, we'll do that while Mr. Cassidy breaks down uh, the Southern Tennessee division and tells everybody more about, it, you know, the last couple of events that he's got. So we've got two events left uh, on Parksville Lake slash Lake Ocoee, depending on what you want to call it. Uh one of the most beautiful places in the entire country, um, made world famous by the white water that flows into it. Uh, a lot of our Jackson kayak family on the crazy truck, the crazy side, uh, that like to do that white water stuff. It's got like the class four rapids or whatever it is. It's the U S Olympic, um, or, well, the Olympics were held there when we were at the Atlanta games. So, um, Beautiful area of the country, full of big spotted bass, uh, deep, clear impoundment. Um, pretty small when it comes to, you know, comparison to like Chickamauga or something like that. Uh, you guys back home in Indiana probably know it about the size of Lake Lemon. Um, it does get some pleasure boats out there, but nothing like that. So it's very quiet. A lot of kayaks out there on the water. So it's a really nice place to fish. Cell phone service is kind of crummy, but, you know, that's that makes it exciting at the meetup time. So we've got two events. Let's see here. September seventh is our last event, and July twenty seventh is our next event. So you can come out, get some of these cool big checks, have some fun, get some awesome angles of year points, so you can qualify to fish with us on Kentucky Lake in uh, Kentucky, uh, Marshall County, to be exact. 
So that's what we've got going on in Tennessee. Uh, obviously, we've got you know New York, Maryland, we've got uh, Virginia, we've got Indiana, we've got Texas. Uh, we've got events uh, spread out all over the country. Go to usabassin.com, uh, click on the kayak tab, the Jackson Kayak link, and that'll take you. Or you just check us out on Facebook. Uh, pretty sure everybody's got uh, uh, a Facebook listing. The national page, Chad does a really good job of posting upcoming tournaments um, for the entire month. So it's really easy to find, click, and get out there and fish. Um, as always, we thank you guys for the opportunity to uh, work with you. Uh, you know, we're here for everybody, and we love working with everybody in the community. So, Rudy hit it on the head. Support your local dealers. Support those local tackle shops. Um, they won't be around forever if we don't take care of them. So, hook them up and uh, get out there and wet a line. There you guys have it. Um, we appreciate you all tuning in tonight, listening to us ramble on. Takes us a minute, but we generally get there here on the Jackson Kayak Doc Talk as we all loosen up and get to talking. You get us talking about fishing. We'll talk to you all night, but we're going to cut her a little bit short here. Um, let you guys get back to you. I want to thank these guys, obviously, for the hard work and the effort that they put into the USA Bass and Jackson Kayak Trail. means the world to us, and we appreciate all of our directors in all of our different divisions. So, we will check you guys out on the next one. And hopefully, hopefully, we might do a podcast live from the cabin down at beautiful and historic Kentucky Lake. So until next time, next week, we'll be back with Jackson Kayak. Fishing team will be back next week um, talking about all kinds of different fun things. So we will see you guys next week. Jackson Kayak, Doc Talk, we're out. Good night, everybody. Good night. See ya. Where you put the hat?